there continues to be some massive developments going on with the Bloodline story, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out what's new with a potential Wiseman addition, Roman Reigns, and more. Starting things off with the new developments for the Bloodline. The Bloodline's main story ever since Roman Reigns went on hiatus has all been about Solo Sokoa's takeover. And the important thing to point out about the takeover is that obviously it wasn't done the right way. Solo Sokoa didn't earn the role or had it passed down to him. He just went rogue and snatched it, instantly going against all the rules of the family. And Solo Sokoa was already next in line. Roman already granted Solo Sokoa the privilege of being the tribal heir, meaning that had he patiently waited, the tribal chief position would have been passed down properly to him when the time was right. He was next in line. But Solo Sokoa handled things the wrong way and decided to act out and take the position prematurely which is something that Paul Heyman was trying to warn Solo about for over three months. But Solo wasn't digging himself out of the hole as time went on. It actually felt like Solo was digging himself deeper into the hole with all of his decision making. He kicked out his own brother, Jimmy Uso, out of the bloodline and then brought in not one, not two, but three wild individuals. And that important piece of information that we always go back to was that Line from Paul Heyman a few weeks ago where he revealed that Roman had the option to bring in all these new individuals into the bloodline several years ago. But Heyman says Roman didn't want them in the bloodline because of how wild and brutal they were. Roman Reigns might have been a manipulative top heel over the last few years, but at the end of the day, he was still a man with honor and a certain code. And he felt like these new members Solo brought in didn't have that matching code. And that's why he never wanted any part of them. But now Solo's gone against all those wishes and brought in all these crazy and wild members into the group without the proper permissions. And the last few months of Solo's story has all been about him slowly slipping into madness and getting out of control. It started with him originally saying that he was only temporarily calling the shots until Roman is back. But then over time... That changed to Solo Sokoa, saying that Roman isn't coming back at all. And on the June 28th edition of SmackDown, we saw the final step and reveal of Solo's plan. He held a celebration where he wanted all the new Bloodline members to acknowledge him and officially crown him as the new Tribal Chief. All the Bloodline members had no issue acknowledging Solo as the Tribal Chief. But it was Heyman who showed a lot of hesitation with the idea. Paul Heyman had been standing by Solo's side this whole entire time, but Heyman made it clear that he still viewed Roman as the only tribal chief. But this was the moment where Solo was basically trying to get Paul Heyman to officially denounce Roman as the tribal chief in front of everyone. And obviously, Paul Heyman wasn't going to do that. Paul Heyman refused to crown Solo Sokoa as the tribal chief and tells them that he's not his tribal chief which got one of the biggest reactions of the night. And it's that moment right there of Heyman saying no to Solo that appears to be the official starting point of Paul Heyman's babyface turn. Over the last few weeks, we've been spending a lot of time talking about how Heyman was basically already in a babyface role. He was being honest and genuine with people like CM Punk and Kevin Owens. He wasn't trying to threaten them with the bloodline, but instead was trying to give them actual heartfelt warmings just to try to stay away from them because they're brutal. So Heyman has technically been transitioning into a babyface this entire time, but that moment of him saying no to Solo is no doubt the official beginning of Paul Heyman's babyface turn, which is pretty insane and special because Paul Heyman is looked at mostly all time as a heel character. You could go back a long time to find an actual babyface run for him, so this was a special moment, and it was just the beginning of this new babyface run. But obviously, Solo didn't appreciate Paul Heyman's response. So the entire new bloodline and himself fully take out Paul Heyman. Jacob hits him with a splash, they threw him through the commentary table, and just destroyed him in every way possible, officially kicking Paul Heyman from the bloodline. Heyman also left the arena in an ambulance. So, not only was this Solo's way of removing Paul Heyman from the group, but it appears that this attack will write Paul Heyman off of television for an extended amount of time. 
Paul Heyman won't be seen again probably until he has Roman Reigns by his side to back him up. And even though Solo has been working on this plan since April, it feels like this moment here on June 28th was the official starting point of Solo's version of the Bloodline. No more old members in the group. Paul Heyman is no longer in the way and annoying him. Solo has full control of the group with his new members fully acknowledging him as the tribal chief for the first time ever. So starting from right now, who knows what Solo Sokoa and this group will do now that the restraints are all gone. And like we mentioned before, this is a group of four individuals that really have no honor and no code to live by. They're just wild and brutal and just do whatever they feel like doing without thinking things through. So we should see a lot of those violent sorts of acts from this new bloodline in the coming weeks. With Paul Heyman being written off, it has fans coming up with a new exciting theory for both sides. Solo has tried to recreate the original bloodline with all the proper positions. He has had his right-hand men with the Tongas, he has his enforcer with Jacob, but now he has a gaping hole at the special counsel in Wiseman position after Heyman's exit. So it only seems logical for Solo Sokoa to bring in another family member, maybe one of the elders to serve as his own counsel and wise men. Solo never really liked Heyman as a wise man because he was handpicked by Roman. Heyman was never truly Solo's guy, but now, as the tribal chief of the group, he gets to handpick his own new wise man. A lot of fans appear to be throwing around Rikishi's name into the theories to take over as Solo's wise man. Rikishi is obviously the father of Solo Sokoa, so there'll be some deep levels of respect there as the wise man. Can't forget that Rikishi even has deep ties to his nephew Jacob as well. Rikishi played a big role in training Jacob, so they have lots of history there as uncle and nephew. So if Solo Sokoa is going to be on the search for a wise man, a lot of fans feel like he wouldn't have to look that far, because his father would be the perfect selection. Rikishi serving as the wise man for Solo Sokoa will also come heavily into play once the original bloodline starts feuding with Solo's bloodline, and Rikishi will see his other sons, Jimmy and Jay, standing on the opposite sides. So that fact itself may cause an interesting narrative for Rikishi because at that point, he'll have his sons on all different sides of the bloodline civil war, and that may cause some conflict for him as a father. And on the other side, Fans think that WWE could potentially be setting something up for the original bloodline to all return together. Roman's been gone, Jimmy was written off just a few days after Roman left, and now Heyman has been written off as well. So with three characters missing in action, is it possible that they all return together to confront Sola Sokoa and the new bloodline? And maybe somehow they find a way to throw in Jay too, even though Jay is from Raw. Roman is definitely going to need new numbers and backup because despite how great he is, he can't handle a four-on-one situation by confronting the new bloodline. So it appears logical that Roman will roll up with the new bloodline with his original bloodline by his side right away from the jump. Sure, the original bloodline went through a lot with each other, but they all now have a common enemy that they can bond over, and that's Solo Sokoa. Solo took out Jimmy Uso, that has to make Jimmy and Jay feel some type of way to their little brother. Solo stole the tribal chief position from Roman Reigns, so you know Roman won't let that slide. And after what all of them did to Paul Heyman, you gotta know he's looking for revenge as well. So all four original Bloodline members have deep issues with Solo Sokoa, and that may just be what pulls them back together to regain control of the family. And it's gonna be one special story, no doubt about it. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.